Welcome to your pre-assessment guide for winch and skidding. This is a guide to help you prepare for your assessment. And today to do that, we're joined by Michael Crutchley. Hello. Who's a registered MPTC assessor and lancher trainer. Plus he has 20 years experience as a contractor in the forest industry. So we'll be picking his brains today. My name is Sarah Chapman and I'm from MJ Woodland Services. And we're gonna guide you through a series of three videos on the winch and skidding. And this is a guide to help you prepare for your assessment, demonstrating good practice techniques and the knowledge needed. These videos have been made possible through the support of an innovative training scheme called Forestry Focused Future. And today we are supported by Gareth Davis from Coy Cymru uh, through the use of his site. These videos are a guide to help prepare you for your assessment, but you should always seek formal training and use your qualification guidance, which is your, what you're issued by your assessment centre before taking an assessment. This is video one of the series of three for the winch and skidder and Mike's going to explain your pre-start checks and maintenance for the winch. Okay, um, we're assuming we've already looked at the prime mover. We're happy, that's all checked. So the bit we're actually going to be looking at now is the winch itself. First of all, big visual check of the actual winch itself, looking at the structure, looking to see, well, it's all of it's there. We know we've got the winch, we've got the butt plate, We've got a guard on the top, um, looking for signs of crack or distress in the actual frame of the machine. And then we'll go on to look at the wire rope and the connectors. And then behind that, we look behind the back at the way it's actually connected to the tractor. Obviously, as you can appreciate, this isn't factory fresh. This has had a couple of years in the forestry. Even so, you know, we're still expected to be in reasonable order. So. Looking, you've got a nice mesh screen there. So if we were to operate the tractor, the, the winch from inside the tractor, there's no dangerous stuff going through this and into the, joining the, the operator in the cab. Other things we're looking for, again, the guard's a bit, you know, bit bent, but okay, the present. And then we're gonna look at the, uh, our connectors. We have chains here, hooks on, keyhole sliders, they actually, the nuts and bolts are all present. No signs of deformation or cracking in those. Our other means of attachment we have here to us today, we have the old polyprop rope loop. So we have a attachment for that. So again, just look and see that's in good order. And then look at the pulley, make sure that can Swivel. See, it's been greased recently, so we know that's okay. We'll also, move up and down. Look inside here. Make sure there's no grooves being worn in it where it's the rope's been running through. Also, when we're looking, make sure the pulley wheel on the inside. Looking for deep scoring or signs of distress where the rope has perhaps worn flat spots or pulled to one side and worn the the groove or you know, other signs of distress or marking on that. Because then all that's gonna do is damage the rope. So just have a good check of that first. And then we look more closely at the rope itself. What we want to see on the end is a proper termination, such as this, or a keyhole slider. This is an example, and I make an example of what not to sit, have on the end of a wire rope. We do not want to see a knot. Um, also with the rope, we want to see that it's strong enough for the winch. So we do have a test thing there to tell us what this braking strain. Okay, so on the tag here, we see we've got the serial number. So the rope this can be identified. It's an 11 mil rope um, and it's braking strain is 12.44 tons. So again, that's plenty, as this is a five and a half ton winch, 12.44 is plenty strong enough rope. Other things we look at is the the um, hydraulic pipes as normal, just see they're in good order, no fraying, cracking, leaking, and they are guarded. Our bottom pulley, it's in present, they're there to be used. Wheel spins around inside nicely. And there's the checks on the this side of the winch finished. Right around here, we've got the two adjusters. This one to adjust the brake. So if you find that 
you, the, the, um, the brake's not holding and the wire is going loose, you can tighten it up here. Or if it, the wire's too hard to pull off, again, you can slacken off here to adjust that. The other adjustment we have is for free spool. So it's important for rope management that when you pull the rope out, the drum doesn't keep whizzing on and slacking all the rope off. So this, you can tighten that up with the free spool adjustment here. It says the drum doesn't overrun. And again, if it's too tight, we can back it off a little bit. So undo the slack, slack on the there, tighten on that bit to, as, as, you, as necessary. Because it's a hydraulic winch, the other thing that needs to be checked is the oil level. Unfortunately, on this particular machine, the way of measuring the oil level is behind quite a few covers, and even then, it's difficult to get to. So, we went, in the interest of brevity, we won't do that today. However, what you can look at, there is a pressure gauge here. So, if you're not getting any, there's no oil, you're not going to get any pressure. So, you can look at it that way. On other winches, which are perhaps slightly better designed from that point of view, please always check the oil level daily to make sure you've got enough oil for operation that day. Make sure the PTO shaft is covered with a guard that, and anchored so as it can't rotate. When it comes to the stop, it won't rotate any further because you do not want to get caught in that. That's rotating at 540 revolutions per minute and powered by a 100 horsepower tractor. It's not going to stop just because you're attached to it. It will wind you in and pull bits off you or it may even kill you. So as it, as it says on there, danger keep away so we've got type 55 h pro built in 2012 number 333 more important numbers though it's actual pulling strain here 50, 55 kilonewtons or 5.5 tons uh, that's with the drum empty a note with a drum full it's now only gone down to 27.5 kilonewtons or two and a half tons um, pressure of hydraulics is running 150 bar. Also, more next and important bit, the rope size is 11 mil rope. Um, it take up to 70 meters. Um, so again, it needs a braking strain of 11 ton. We've got 12.44 ton braking strain. Um, and then the actual weight of the winch is 414 kilograms. So we know the, the tractor can lift that and the PTO speed we're looking for is 540 revolutions per minute. Okay, as um, winching or line skidding is all about the rope, it's now important we pull the rope off the drum and have a look. Um, the, win the rope on here is actually brand spanking new, so what I've got here is one I broke earlier. So, so things we're looking for then, we've got sprags, also very important, we're going to be wearing our nice thick gloves at this point to handle rope. Um, Signs of deformation in the rope is what we're looking for. Yeah, broken strands. You can see here it's been kinked. And you know, it's now starting to pigtail a little bit. So this rope was definitely ready for replacement. These are all sort of things you'd be looking for. Um, other thing to look for is to measure the diameter of it. If it's lost more than 10 mil, 10% of its original diameter, time to put it in the bin. The usually you get to that point, it'll start breaking of its own accord anyway. Um, and say so any of these, I see any of this damage, it is time to retire the rope. As part of the operation, we need all sorts of ancillary equipment, such as pulleys and straps, um, to make sure that you know, they are gonna be strong enough for what we're doing. We're looking for the data plates, telling us what they are actually ratings for them. Okay, so this has got a five ton braking strain around the pulley. Um, so you've got two and a half ton pull on either side. Um, max speed, 90 meters a minute. Um, it's also telling the size of the pulley. That's important because the thickness of the rope governs the strength of the size of the pulley. So the wider the rope, the wider the pulley you need. Is the Strops again looking for data plates. Um, quick visual guide yellow is three ton, but also for those who are color blind, we have got three black stripes. Likewise, this one red is five ton, but again, we got five black stripes. So, three ton strop 
but it's only three ton and it's pulled like that. If you're using it as a tow rope, so you're putting one vehicle to another vehicle or towing, that's now three ton. If you're somehow able to get it in a U shape and use it, you've actually got six ton because it's now doubled up, assuming you've got your foot in the mount there. If you were to noose it, which is basically putting a knot in it, as soon as you put a knot in anything, you reduce its strength. And so this is immediately down rated to four fifths its original. So it's now 2.4 ton. And also what, when you're looking at it though, it's very important to check for damage. So that was a brand new one. Here we've got a slightly used one. Um, three black lines, so it was three ton. Um, the yellow's obviously long time faded away, but the things we look you know, most concerned about, you know, we've now got a bit of damage there. So we would not trust this as a three ton drop any longer. As part of your assessment, you'll also need to know about health and safety legislation, emergency procedures, waste disposal, environmental damage, PPE and record keeping. Now information on all of these can be found on our base machine assessment videos, so you need to check those out, as well as the other two videos on winch and skidding in this series. So make sure you watch all three videos for the winch and skidder and then go and check out the videos on the PPE etc in the base machine assessments. Plus you need to read your FISA guides which are available on the FISA website and reference to these will come up shortly. So we'd like to thank Mike for his time today and we wish you the best of luck.